Foresight Fight, devlog number 38. For the last couple of these, I've mentioned that I've been having a little bit of trouble figuring out what exactly this game needs to get closer to completion. So I decided to, instead of focusing on things in this application, uh, focus outside a little bit at some technical things that were bothering me. I needed to work on my tools, as it turned out. I did a few things in the application, so I played around with my SDFs a bit more, and uh, got a backdrop in here that I don't really like, um, but at least I have the sort of blending in and out going on, uh, so I can feel like it was worthwhile implementing that sign distance field thing. Uh, this text changed color a little bit. This is a small step in the right direction. It is not all the way there yet, uh, but you know, that's, that's what my... Uh, that's kind of the direction I'm trying to go. This this needs to look like something different, but I'm, I'm not sure what yet. So that's what I have. Uh, other minor visual changes I did. I had a realization that uh, my battlefield, all those little tiles I had laid out, would look way better if I removed the spacing between them. So now they're all together and it looks like one continuous space. I think this is a huge improvement. There's no energy sigil on that battlefield. There's one here. Yeah, okay. So anyway, you know, you can see what it looks like. And another small change, I was talking about spacing for these resource bars. I just uh, removed the spacing between these so that they would... Uh, it leaves a much more sensible amount of space for... What was that? Okay, right, so I have a thing input here. I'm trying to... Uh, whoa, did I see... This is spawning way too high. Okay, got a little visual bug there. I did change a minor thing with my uh, my number effect, and apparently I uh, broke it by making it way too high up here. Okay, well, I don't know how I did that, but anyway. Uh, right, so status effects. Um, the spacing looks better just with those bars together. That's all that it was. I don't know why I had that space in there, but it's gone now. Anyway, so... Um, that is actually all that I have to show here in this application. I did not make a lot of changes to this. So what I spent my last three weeks doing was a deep dive on audio. I talked about audio a few times and my plans for what to do with it and finally decided it was time to actually do something about them. So I have this little application here. Um, hold on, let's back up a little bit. Um, back up to where exactly. All right, so let me talk about how I've, let's see, I wanna be in here. So my audio files for Foresight Fight, I talked about this a little bit with the uh, the padlock open sound. I can't actually open this right now for reasons um, that I showed several videos ago anyway. Um, but I have this this recorded audio sample that I pitch down and equalize and uh, combine with a synthesized uh, waveform to, to create the unlock sound. All the other sounds in the game are made with this tool called BFXer, uh, which is written in ActionScript and looks like this. So if I load from disk, I don't really like this tool very much. Like it does some cool things, but basically the UI doesn't agree with me and it's, it has some what seem to be bugs or maybe it's just me not knowing how to use it. But like the fire sound, for example, if I load that, uh, it's just made by choosing a waveform type and moving a bunch of these sliders around. Like if I wanted to start at a different frequency, uh, that would sound different. If I wanted the frequency to slide differently, You know, I can just move all this stuff around. Uh, so this is just setting the parameters of a synthesizer to make a uh, sound effect. And you know, I can. this has some useful presets, et cetera. Just generate a random sound, then iterate on that if you want. Uh, so this is how I made all of the sounds that went into Foresight Fight. Um, I was unsatisfied with the workflow of using this tool with all of its, um, the little things I didn't like about its UI and the fragility of relying on an external tool. So I, the situation has changed a little bit since, um, 
since what it was. But back then, the Mac version of this, when my primary computer was a Mac, uh, was a 32-bit application that ran in low-resolution mode on a Retina display and... Um, newer versions of mac os don't run 32-bit applications anymore so i that just sort of emphasized to me that this is not something i want integrated into my tool chain but the thing with that is that i have all of these um all of these bfx or sound uh files here generated with this application that are used to create the um the Og Vorbis formatted sounds that go into Foresight Fight itself that I put in here and that actually get loaded by uh, Foresight Fight to, to play at runtime. So if I lost access to BFX or in some way by like operating system, oh, right, that's already open. <laughs> uh, operating system changes breaking it or, uh, you know, other things. Um, there's always the option of like keeping an old computer around to resynthesize these if I need to, but I wanted to solve this problem better. So as it happens, this application is open source, and uh, although it's written in ActionScript, I made a port in C in code that I control. Um, BFXer is based on an older tool called SFXer, which is written in C and was much easier to port. So I have both an SFXer synth in here so that's the default. I can choose like a, a random something. That one didn't even play. Okay. Uh, there are various reasons a random thing you might not play. There we go. That one makes a noise. <laughs> uh, so I have the SFXer synth in here. This is, this is all code under my complete control. I have BFXer, which has a bunch more parameters more wave types, the, the sampled audio happens to come out louder for some reason. I'm not actually sure why that is, but it's just just a, uh, a side effect of how the, the different synthesizer works. So, you know, uh, different wave types, etc. And I have, I've implemented parsing for the format of sounds that's in Foresight Fight. So if I were to load, say, Cast Spell, that doesn't sound right. Uh, <laughs> that's supposed to... Why? What the heck is going on? Why is there a threshold here? <laughs> well, something's broken. You know what that's supposed to sound like. Why? What's wrong with my freak ramp? <laughs> Frequency delta ramp. Uh, uh, what does BFXer actually call that? Okay, this is... I haven't tested this very thoroughly, as you can tell. Um, cat spell. That's what it's supposed, supposed to sound like. Uh, delta slide. That's what this is. Are you going to tell me your actual value? Okay, point, point two. Hold up. But this was set to... Maybe it was that when I loaded it. Well, now I'm curious what's gone wrong here. Do these others work? That doesn't sound quite right. Something's weird. That sounds right, mostly. Wait a second. No, okay, that's what I that's what happens if I play this with the BF, uh, SFXer synth implementation. Uh what even effect was that? Haste maybe. It plays weird right after I load it for some reason. I don't know why that is. This is not extremely polished. Um But anyway, so <laughs> bugs aside, uh I have full control over these source files and I can resynthesize things um, as I need to and this is using the same code base underneath as Foresight Fight so the same underlying libraries so everywhere that I can build Foresight Fight uh, or any of my other um, uh, projects I'll be able to 
have full control of the synthesizer and I can either export this as an AUG uh, or a wave or whatever I want. Um, uh, well, yeah, I'll just, you can just take my word that that works. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's an interesting thing to demo. Um, I can save this as, right now I can only save SFX or uh, source files, but I can load the BFX or ones. Um, and uh, right, so I could either continue with the workflow that I used where Foresight Fight loads augs and plays them and I synthesize them outside either during the build process or just by using this tool and exporting that and putting that sound into my repository. Or I could at startup actually just run the synthesizer code and use those super tiny, uh, this is not the right directory. Um, you know, like the augs are pretty short. They're not very large um, windows. Please, I want um, computing filters. No, I, okay, I want uh, date modified size and not this nonsense you automatically give me when you detect audio files in the in a directory. Okay, so uh, like, you know, 23 kilobytes, 12 kilobytes, five kilobytes, etc. cetera. Uh, the, uh, the actual source files for those, which pretty much just list parameters for these uh, sliders are all well under one kilobyte. Uh, so they're very small, like uh, I think like a hundred some bytes is the, the total size of those. Anyway, so I could have smaller files going into the, uh, the executable at the cost of a little bit of runtime, like startup time uh, for running the synth on these. So, you know, it's, it's a trade-off. Uh, there are various ways to do that. But the thing is, like, I have options now. Um, so ultimately, this, this tool, Audio Lab here, is supposed to be my uh, all-in-one tool for every audio production need that I have. Step one was to get full control over my, uh, my synthesizer parameter files that I had for, uh, for external tools. So I used SFXer for a previous project uh, called Convergence that I did a while ago. And I've imported a few of these sounds during the course of editor testing. So some of them will sound familiar like this. Oh, that's so loud. Um, or like, I think I used this one for some stuff. Dude, why is that so loud? Okay, it's like excessively loud for some reason, but anyway, I know I, I think this is what I use for my, uh, um, here, this will fix it. It didn't fix it. There, that's more reasonable. Why is it playing so weird? I had some kind of bug going on here, like not all of these parameters are being read correctly or something. It worked on my other computer. It worked a few minutes ago before I changed some stuff. Nah, don't worry about it. That's fine. But anyway, this is the uh, Archer's Volley sound. So yeah, I have SFXer um, loading for these super tiny files that uh, uh, list out these parameters. I have BFXer for the ones I used for Foresight Fight. And the plan going forward is uh, to expand this for all of my audio synthesis needs because this doesn't fully cover, just having these sliders here doesn't cover some cases like um, if I want to have, there's some things I want to do with finer control over the uh, the frequency of here. Like if I reset this, I can choose a bass frequency, I can choose a waveform type. Um, if I put it on BFX or I get a few more options, but you know, it's not all that meaningful. Uh, so yeah, bass frequency, whatever. I can uh, ramp it up and down. I can have the ramp change over time. Okay, this is doing the thing that uh, my other sound did. There's like some weird threshold here where this is just being ignored or... I don't know what's happening. Anyway, uh, in SFX or mode, does this make more sense? Yeah, so maybe just my BFX or reading of this parameter is wrong. Anyway, see, so yeah, that goes down, goes up, etc. That's all the control I get over the change in waveform frequency over the course of the sound. So I think I could do a lot more if I could, like, 
do a custom curve up and down something something and you know uh space out these uh these audio samples differently repeat them and i don't know there, there's a bunch of stuff i want to do uh so but i have a uh, the beginning of a tool now that will let me do all of those things that i need to do then step four uh will be to use these synthesized samples as inputs for a custom music sequencer because I want to just head off the problem that I had with BFXer here, where like I use an external tool, generate some useful uh, data with it that I don't want to lose, then possibly have a problem with the tool itself and have to go to all the effort and take three weeks to write a parser and uh, port over the um, the implementation of the synthesizer, etc. I want to just skip that whole part of the process and just use my own music synthesizer. Uh, with these as inputs for my instrument samples or, you know, actual sampled recorded audio as input for them, for example. And just a simple sequencer that says when and at what pitch to play each thing. Uh, so that's going to be fun. Uh, because, yeah, I need to make some steps toward uh, writing music for this game if I ever want it to have any. Which I do. That is part of the plan. Uh... So yeah, that's where I am. Still uh, doing a deep dive on audio. I still don't have actually the ability to equalize uh, that padlock sound yet. Um, that would be part of step three, expanding the synthesizer to fit my needs. So, you know, we'll get there. Uh, or maybe I'll decide to replace that with some kind of synthesized audio when I have more control here and can make uh, make the uh, the sort of... I don't know, put, put together some parameters that sound good for unlocking the thing. I don't know where I'm ultimately going with this, but I just, I need options. I need my, uh, my tool to work for me. And yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, so, right, project's still in a weird place, but cool things are happening. I have audio synthesis under my control, and now that it's there, uh, I can start expanding it and working toward music and more sound effects. And, like, I haven't added a sound effect to Foresight Fight in a very long time, and that's just because of this whole problem. So what this has immediately allowed me to do is to create more sound effects and feel okay about it and put them into the game without just having to pull from my old pool of, like, convergence sound effects or, you know my existing library. Uh, and yeah, work toward actually writing some background music. So yeah, audio. Audio is happening. <laughs> it's fun stuff. Uh, and I'm going to keep chipping away at this and see what happens. So I'll see you next time.